Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade with the February Flesh and Blood sales data video with data scraped off of TCG Player. And of course, first I have Welcome to Wraith Unlimited, Arcane Rising Unlimited, and Crucible of War Unlimited. I do not cover the first edition boxes of those three because they are too expensive and they sell too infrequently to matter. So I've put up two months worth of data right here on the horizontal axes of these three plots. First off, just to show that since January 1st, Welcome, welcome to Wraith prices have gone from $60 up to above $90, a 50% increase in the last two months. And of course, if we take the month over month table, as always, this will have January boxes sold, February boxes sold, the month over month percentage difference of February from January, then January average price per box sold, February average price per box sold, and again, the month over month difference in those. Then I multiply those two together and get the January revenue, the February revenue, and the month over month difference in revenue. And now the first thing that we notice is Welcome to Wraith boxes sold 21% fewer boxes in February than January. Now a tiny bit of that is because February is a short month. It's 28 days. January is 31. So February is about a 10% shorter month. But the other thing the other reason for that is on last month's video, something that I said was that if you broke down on the day that I did that video a month ago and you counted all of the Welcome to Wraith boxes for sale on TCG Player that day, it was only 141. And that includes cases broken down into four boxes, 141 boxes total. Today, before I recorded this, I went out and looked. There are 150 for sale today. So in the last month that went from 141 to 150, at the same time it sold 265. So there are nine more on the market today than there were a month ago and 265 sold, which means that 274 boxes came onto the market in the last month. And that's something that I will occasionally touch on on this channel is that you cannot simply take the number of boxes available for sale to mean much. And in January, of course, we had sold 336 boxes, and at the end of the month, only 141 left on the market. And with the price rising, that coaxed a lot more boxes out. 270 plus boxes were pulled onto the market in the month. And again, the reasoning for that, the price has gone up 25% just in the month, 50% overall for the year. Now, Arcane Rising sales were up 31% on a per box basis, and the price was essentially flat. Crucible of War gained back after the big loss from December to January. It basically made it up. It got back to December numbers in February. So a 92% increase over January, but only because January was such a big drop from from December. Moving on, we'll go to Monarch First Edition, Tales of Aria First Edition, and Everfest First Edition. And again, just two months of data out there. And if we go to the month over month table, what we'll see is Monarch First Edition sales were up by 156%. And so when I keep pounding the table and I say that, you know, people are making too big of a deal of the Monarch First Edition print run in the long run, the 125,000 boxes. The size will not matter. They keep getting consumed. Every month they fall into diamond hands. They get opened. They get otherwise attrited from the market. And as we saw, a huge increase in boxes sold in February over January. Tales of Aria first edition, similarly a 32% increase. And Everfest first edition would have been probably flat or slightly positive if not for the shorter month of February compared to January. And the prices of all three were relatively flat. And we can take a quick look at Monarch First Edition versus Monarch Unlimited. And of course, one thing we always notice here between these two is this approximately $30 to $35 price difference that has been holding very consistently for a long time. And what it means is that uh, fewer people are willing to jump that gap. And so the, the difference in sales between First Edition boxes and Unlimited boxes is smaller than what you're going to see for Tales of Aria. So the Monarch Unlimited boxes up 13%. That's not really much to write home about. And if we go to Tales of Aria First Edition versus Unlimited, you see that the price difference here is only about 6 
six dollars four dollars something like that it's it's much smaller and so when you go to the month over month table that four dollar price difference means that a lot of people are willing to make that tiny jump to get the boxes that have cold foils in them and so uh, that's just the difference in the behavior of the consumer and you can see it there january only sold 24 boxes february 25 and prices were flat for the month for those Real quickly, we'll take a look at History Pack. And, you know, what's interesting about this is just how stable the price has been in the whole time that it's been out. So in February, it sold 40% fewer boxes. Prices were very stable, 3% difference. But if I come over here, then what we see is that after the initial craziness of pre-sales and release day, the price settled into this $20 band and has virtually not left it. So very, very stable pricing on this. Now, if we come to the third generation boxes, Uprising Dynasty and Outsiders, and we'll just take one month of data on the plots because that's all we have for Outsiders because it is only in pre-release still. It does not come out until March 24th. And when we go to the month over month table, we'll have a little funkiness on the outsider line because there is no data for January. So that's why it says, well, it grew by infinite percent. But we can still look at January versus February for Uprising and Dynasty. 11% increase on Uprising, essentially flat for Dynasty and pricing very, very flat. One other thing that I want to do is grab all of these and come over to the month over month table and show you something here. So if we were to add up all of the revenues of the boxes sold in January, it would come to $113,000. And in February, it was $161,000. So an increase of 42% in February over January. And you know, that's a good measure because it's the actual number of dollars that buyers were willing to part with to buy flesh and blood off of TCG player in the month, 42% more dollars in February than January. And you know, it's, it's hard to always make some kind of deep inference about what these data mean, about what it means for the market and what it means going forward. I know that uh, one thing that I was looking at earlier was putting these onto a plot together with Uprising Dynasty and Outsiders on a plot together. And we've put them on relative life cycles, so days since their respective releases. And so this little yellow line down here of Outsiders, it's not even re reached its release day yet. This big vertical jump here on Uprising is from back when TCG Player used to do pre-sale kits for new flesh and blood releases they would have i think two boxes in them and some sleeves and maybe a play mat i forget exactly what was in them they stopped doing that for some reason and i think that's kind of hurt the initial wave of enthusiasm for buying these because they were an okay deal also this set uprising came out last june when there still were some fair weather investors hanging around even after the monarch first edition print run size release and before the cruel summer had made them all go away to pursue different hobbies and so it'll be interesting to see in this next month as the yellow line of outsiders gets closer and closer and just barely passes its release date at the end of march what it does if it can thread in between these two i think that's probably where it's going to land i'm hoping it will do better than dynasty and i don't think it'll do better than uprising just because again the support on pre-release kits is not there and the fair weather investors have gone away so i expect that in a month when we come back this yellow line of of outsiders will be somewhere in this range in here and it'll be about one week post release at that point and just briefly, I want to come back to Welcome to Wraith, Arcane Rising, and Crucible of War and plot those up with the whole 14 months of data that we have here. And, you know, we see a lot of history here. We see a lot of collected data, but something to really point out is the boxes disappearing. In the last 14 months, 3,000 boxes of Welcome to Wraith Unlimited have disappeared off of TCG Player, a little over 2,100 boxes of Arcane Rising, and nearly 1,500 boxes of Crucible of War. And there's this, there's this weird thing that happens in the TCG community where people kind of forget again and again that when a product goes out of print, the supply dwindles until the 
it eventually gets tight and then the price goes up it becomes harder to get and the price goes up and up and up and people have this sentiment that well i'll just buy it tomorrow i'll just buy it tomorrow i'll just buy it tomorrow and you know i spent a lot of 2022 telling people that these three products were very underpriced finally the market has caught up to that and like i said in the last two months welcome to wraith has gone up in price 50 percent and in the couple months preceding that arcane rising soul a pretty good leg up maybe 30 percent and you know just a warning out there to everyone the same thing will happen with monarch first edition tales of aria first edition and everfest first edition a year from now i'll be saying hey i spent most of 2023 pounding the table about mon first toa first and everfest first and how they were underpriced the market was sleeping on them and they should never be this low so keep that in mind when you have some discretionary tcg investing money to allocate to something that these are the three things that right now the market is really sleeping on just keep that in mind otherwise let me know what you think other data sets i could use other things you'd like to see me explore questions you have otherwise like comment share and subscribe join me on final trade thanks a lot everyone